we're taking a short last minute trip to San Diego. A couple of reasons. One, we've always wanted to do the Bay Shore bike trail. And second, this is the week of the Pleasure Way rally, which we did not sign up for. My fault, I waited too long and it filled up. But we've gotten uh, two nights at the Silver Strand Beach RV park. Well, it's not an RV park, it's a, anyway, you'll see it when we get there. So we've got two nights at the Silver Strand State Beach that's on Coronado and the rally is right across the bay. So we'll be able to ride our bike over to the rally. We can't attend anything, but we can at least say hi to a few people that we know over there. But first we have to drop off this at uh, Kohl's to go back to Amazon. When you order things online and they say they're compatible, sometimes they're not. So even though John clicked on the link that we had purchased uh, water pumps from before, in fact, this is our, our third one, uh, it went, uh, I don't know, somehow he ended up with this thing and it may be compatible, but the holes don't align. So he's already ordered the right one. And yeah, the holes that attach to the wall don't align properly. So uh, we'll send that one back and keep the one that he bought to replace it. San Diego County boasts a significant military presence, earning it the moniker of Military City USA. There are more than 115,000 active duty service members in San Diego County. The five largest institutions are Camp Pendleton, Naval Base San Diego, Marine Corps Air Station Miramar, Naval Base Point Loma, and Naval Base Coronado. San Diego has 24% of all naval vessels, 17% of the Navy's active duty personnel, and is home to a third of the U.S. Marine Corps' active duty force. We have arrived and uh, check-in time is at two, and I guess they're pretty strict about that. So we are gonna hang out here for an hour in the parking lot. We do have a beach pass, so we don't have to worry about that. And it looks a little bit blown out, but it's a beautiful day. Thought I'd share a little information about the uh, camping area. It's water and power, they're just pedestals. You're basically camping in a parking lot. It's $65 for one of those spots that's just, um, that's inland of the sand. And then if you want one that's right on the sand, it's $85 and we splurged. We went with the $85 site and uh, I know they're really close together, but that's all right. Okay, we're gonna get hooked up. And right now there's nobody next to us on either side. Probably won't stay that way, but you never know. This is infinitely better than Bolsa Chica, isn't it? And cheaper too. Wonder what they are. All the way down. Okay, we're gonna turn around and walk the other way. <laughs> the Tijuana River drains an area between the U.S. and Mexican border and is heavily polluted with raw sewage. Effluent from Tijuana's inadequate wastewater treatment plants often causes beach closures at the park, so check with personnel before entering the water. Efforts are ongoing to address the issues, including $300 million pledged as part of the U.S.-Mexico-Canada agreement. I told John to look out for glass, and he found a piece. This is not the best beach for finding glass. It's okay for sand dollars. Nice. And those are the Coronado Islands. The Coronado Islands is a group of four small islands located off the northwest coast of Mexico's Baja Peninsula. Originally inhabited by indigenous peoples, they later became significant landmarks for Spanish explorers, including Juan Rodriguez Cabrillo, who charted the area in the 16th century. And then of course during uh, Prohibition, they were used as kind of a meeting spot for, uh, for smugglers. I will link a fascinating story called the Coronado Incident, where L. Ron Hubbard, yes, that one, was relieved of duty for unauthorized shelling of the island. It's a purple sand dollar. I pretty much didn't bring any food on this trip. I thought we'd stop at the grocery store, but we didn't. So I've scrounged through the drawers because I usually keep a few things inside. 
I found some uh, Bisquick buttermilk biscuit mix, so that, and a can of soup somewhere down here. There we go. Ah. So that's what we're having for dinner. Okay, ready to start the fire. Voila. say that's worth $85. Okay. We're getting ready to do the Bay Shore Trail and here are some tips if you are thinking of doing this because I found this information hard to find. The ferry uh, because there, there are two different ferry landing areas. We're on the Coronado side. We're going to take the Coronado Ferry to the Broadway one. And it is it runs on the half hour. So when you're going from Coronado to the San Diego City side, it's on the half hour. When you're returning the other way, it's on the hour. It's $8 per person. Bikes are free. They say bike space is limited. Don't know what that means, but we'll find out. The other nice thing about this uh, particular beach is that there is a tunnel so you can get across the highway otherwise you'd have to go probably a mile or so up one way or the other. There's a tunnel that'll take you under and directly over to the bike path. The entire path is not physically separated. There's a big section apparently that goes through the downtown area that's not. Oh, that looks low. Okay, thank you. Yeah. As you ride north on the Coronado Peninsula, you can't miss the red turrets of the beautiful Hotel del Coronado. This iconic beachfront hotel is a historical landmark and the second largest wooden structure in the U.S. When it opened in 1888, it was the largest resort hotel in the world and has hosted presidents, royalty, and celebrities. Coronado Bridge was completed in 1969 after many decades of planning and negotiations with the U.S. Navy. Bikes and pedestrians are not allowed, but a passenger ferry has replaced the auto ferry that first transported me to Coronado back in 1969. Because of the height needed to allow aircraft carriers clearance under the bridge, a curve was added. If bridges like this give you the heebie-jeebies, then I recommend you drive the long way around through Imperial Beach. Once a year, mm -hmm. yeah, it is the highest revenue from this 
seeded in the city. As we be told to you, it is not the highest producing in the world. That would be... Clarissa, please get ready. Yeah, so this is where we buy them? Yeah. Oh, okay, good. Yeah. Thank you, Paul. Yeah. Did you get it? Is it down here? Oh, there it is. Okay. We had a little tour from this local named Paul, and uh, he told us about this place that has good sandwiches called Boney's Bayside Market. It's on Orange, and John has gone in to get some sandwiches that we can, you know, take across the ferry and eat over there. Just in time. Boat. Oh. John just got me a Valentine's Day gift <laughs> at the market. <laughs> I like it. Let's see how they taste. Open them up. Yeah, look at it, that. He likes it because they're a three to one carb to sugar ratio, or no, carb to fiber. Sorry. No added sugars. No added sugars. There's a dolphin. There are two dolphins out here. If you have the time, then consider stopping at the USS Midway Museum, located adjacent to the ferry landing. This historic aircraft carrier was one of America's longest serving and played pivotal roles in the Cold War and Operation Desert Storm. On board, you can explore its decks, hangars, and over 60 exhibits. Sandwiches right here in this little tiny park. These things are only five ninety five. Really? Sandwiches. Six bucks. Yeah. Six bucks for a sandwich. Nice. On Coronado. Yeah. Yeah. John says this is really good. <laughs> Let's see how mine is. <laughs> and I said, did you get any napkins? And he said, that's what socks are for. <laughs> but I always come prepared. <laughs> My veggie sandwich is really good too. Of the twenty-four mile Bayshore Bikeway. About 18 miles are on designated bike paths, and the remaining six miles are on street, which can be uncomfortable in some sections. Do you know how to get to the Bayshore Bikeway? We found the signage through this area to be a bit challenging oh and lost our way several times. There are more than 1,340 miles of bikeways in the San Diego region and expanding the network is a key priority of the San Diego Transportation Authority. The regional bike plan guides the development of the bike network through the year 2050. Oh my God. Easy rider on the highway Station wagon going slow Windows open you are basking A new 6.7-mile bikeway is being constructed that will connect the San Ysidro border crossing to the Bayshore Bikeway and should be completed next year. Another detour, but there's a Circle K here, so we're going to stop and get an ice cream. Yeah, there's a huge amount of work going on right now down on this part of the trail. It's not really a trail. Most of it's on the street. And uh, I talked to one of the workers. He said, yeah, they're fixing up the bike trail. On the other side, it's already done. So on our side, it's a bit rugged, a lot of glass and stuff like that. But we should have crossed over and gone on the finished side. But now we know, and now you know. 
Oh, yes. So, I gotta tell you a story. I'm walking around. Yeah. And I'm walking around. Yeah. And I'm walking around, and there's no ice cream. And I said to the lady counted, no ice cream? And she says, right there. And there's just like this little tiny fridge, maybe like smaller than you have the little ones yeah. in the hotel room. That's it? And they had these. Oh, good. It's a nice little park here called Pepper Park. And there's a, I think that's a private ship. As it turned out, this $300 million mega yacht called Amadea was alleged to be owned by a Russian oligarch and thus seized in Fiji in 2022. It arrived in San Diego in June, where it has been docked adjacent to Pepper Park. Our campground is straight across this bay. You can see the tops of the RVs. Soon after leaving Pepper Park, John had a bad fall. I slowed to read a sign. John says I brake checked him. I say he was tailgating. But I heard him at the moment he knew he was going to either crash or run into me. He chose the crash and flipped over the top of his handlebars. Three cyclists saw the fall and stopped to help. Yeah, no doubt. We've all used them. In typical John fashion, he said he was fine, but I knew he wasn't. He limped on to our destination, where he assessed the damage, bought some pain relievers, and despite the intense pain, managed to enjoy our visit. Want me to do it? It sounded really good. I know. Wow, he lucked out again. <laughs> Definitely get a screensaver. Wow. Wow. A, Are you sure a, you don't want me to get the van? That's a road rash. Guy on the trail yep. said, oh, go to Bones for your, um, it's got a great, they do great sandwiches. You can get your smoothie. That's what I'm thinking maybe I should do. We're gonna throw this up on the internet. Oh, you're <laughs> a couple of hot mamas. Are so rude. Oh, JJ's waiting for you. We have an outback too. I understand that there's a crazy couple who lives in this van. Uh, hello. That they're out of control wild. That's we what are. I understand. That's us. Look at these guys. I couldn't believe when they told me that you guys were gonna be here. Yeah. <laughs> we just rolled in. Wait a minute. Yeah, let's get dueling cameras. I'm gonna get a camera. Yeah. <laughs> this, is, uh, this is a camera. Thing. Well, you guys oh, have it. you guys have the the best video in the world when your what? refrigerator fell out. Oh Before yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it just took one turn to the left. Oh, this is gonna be this is all, yeah, this is all right. Not real reliable. Oh, yeah. oh, right. Yeah. We had such a good time talking with everybody. Now it's late, the sun's going down, and this is the most beautiful part of this bike trail. But my camera batteries are all dying. We'll just have to come back and do it again. You're hurting. 
butt. I bet you you're hurting. All over. That's a double D. Road rash, big time. Oh. I need to conclude this episode of John falling down with a little a little update on yesterday. So first of all, I want to say we re I really enjoyed the ride yesterday, although it's poorly marked and they're doing some work on sections of it. Uh, so. I'll just leave that caveat. The best part is between Silver Strands and the ferry. That That is really a great little ride. Beautiful parks along the way, gorgeous homes. Uh, but John did have a fall before we got to the RV rally. And uh, it was a really bad fall. That's why I didn't even film anything. But uh, I, you know, I'll insert the pictures of his swollen knees, but what hurts him even more are his wrists. And let me show you those. So, I don't know if you can see the, how swollen they both are. You can hardly move them. So I'm going to take care of packing everything up, getting the bikes all ready. Right yeah, you can really see that swelling there. And the helmet did the trick, saved his noggin. And he didn't sleep very well, did you? No, it was horrible. <laughs> okay. He has made an appointment at the urgent care by our house. So I will drive home and uh, we'll go there. He also wants to take the bike in to have them check out any damage that may have been caused. John says the left brake is destroyed. That's the front brake, isn't yes. it? Um, and, and even though that, the guy that saw it and came, to, you know, came down to help, he, um, he said, oh, he only used the front brake, but no, John used both brakes and still went over the handlebars. If the dropper post had been down two, three inches, I wouldn't have gone over the top. But the fact I had all the way extended, uh -huh. just it yeah. put my center of gravity so high it went yeah. over the top. And the reason is because, well, the reason he did this is because, well, he says I brake checked him. But the truth is, well, partly he was following too close. And I, because I'd never on this, been on this trail before, and it, the trail turned suddenly, and I noticed the sign that said, goes this way, and so I had stopped to make that turn. And then that was it. That was the end of the... <laughs> but he still managed to ride all the way back from the RV park, which was about eight miles, and mostly in the dark. And I had to stop so quickly because I didn't want to plow into you. Yeah, yes, he was. I had to really was, jam on the brakes because yes. it was, I was going to run her over and then both of us might have been injured. It's better for me just to be all screwed up. <laughs> I don't think so. Daddy liked talk radio. On gravel, he would drive real slow. He told me, let's go see what we could see. We pulled into the empty lot. Before the pavement got too hot Underneath her leafy crown The only shade for miles and miles around I am checking out Before I move to the ice cream, let me give you an update on John. He had x-rays done, nothing was broken. He had contusions on the knees, as you saw, and two sprained wrists. He's doing well in the walking department and is focused more on walking right now than cycling uh, because his wrists are still bothering him a bit. But we're looking forward to several trips this summer and we are not deterred in the least. We know that falling is part of having fun. On to ice cream. Several hundred of you submitted your favorite ice cream shops and John thankfully agreed to put them on a map. He also created a database. So we have it for you in two forms. We have a map. You can use that as you're traveling around the country. You can look at the map and see if there's anything close by. Or you can download the data that he had he put on Excel and you can manipulate that. You can put it in whatever form you like. And so that will be available too. And both of those will be in the description box below the video. Our next video will be in two weeks. We will be on the road and heading toward Austin where my niece lives. We're gonna see the eclipse from Austin 
And thankfully, our son and two grandsons are coming down. It's their spring break. And so we'll have a little bit of a family reunion down in Texas. This should be an exciting year for us. We will have a new van. We will be trying out new bike rides. We'll be making new friends. And hopefully you guys will join us as we go. I know a lot of you would like to see the van. And in that regard, we will look for opportunities so that you can do that. Uh, we're going to attend several van expos with the new van, if we get it in time. And uh, we'll let you know where those are. And you can come by and say hi and see the van. That's it for now. We will see you on the road in two weeks. I will post weekly when we are on the road. And then we will be coming back home before we get ready for our much longer summer adventures. Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.